Today, we're talking about solar photovoltaic systems. So first, some terminology. The photovoltaic effect is when the sun's photons strike the surface of the panel, they knock out electrons from the silicon uh, sandwich and into the electric field generated by the solar cells. This results in a DC or directional current, which is then harnessed into usable power. Solar photovoltaic systems convert sunlight into electrical energy. A single PV device is known as a cell. An individual PV cell produces about one to two watts of power. These cells are made of different semiconductor materials and are often less than the thickness of four human hairs. Wow. To boost the power output of PV cells, they are connected together to form modules or panels. Modules can be used individually or several can be connected to form arrays. One or more array uh, is then connected to the electrical grid as part of a complete PV system. Because of this modular structure, PV systems can be virtually any size to meet demand. Inverters. Inverters are used to convert the direct current generated by the solar photovoltaic modules into alternating current, AC, which is used for local transmission of electricity, as well as most appliances in our homes and businesses. PV systems either have one inverter that converts the electricity generated by all the modules or micro inverters that are attached to each individual module. Batteries. Batteries store solar voltaic energy so we can use it to power our homes or businesses at night or when weather elements keep sunlight from reaching the PV panels. Solar charge controllers are essential. Uh, the charge controller prevents batteries from being overcharged and prevent the batteries from discharging through the solar panel array at night. So we see we have sunlight striking our solar panel and that energy is then sent onto our uh, inverter. Again, that will convert it from the DC power to AC power and leaving the inverter, that power is sent to your house to power your um, lights, electronics, appliances, etc. or that power is sent back to the grid and there'll usually be a solar charge controller like this so if you have batteries uh, that you charge up during the day to run your house at night or during inclement weather again that uh, excuse me that uh, solar charge controller will protect the batteries from being overcharged or from from energy going back the wrong direction Wow. Different types of solar panels. Monocrystalline solar panels, also known as single crystal panels, made from a single pure silicon uh, crystal that is cut into several wafers. Since they are made from uh, pure silicon, they can be readily identified by their dark black color. Uh, the use of pure silicon also makes monocrystalline panels the most space efficient and long lasting. Polycrystalline solar panels. Uh, these come from different silicon crystals instead of one. The silicon fragments are melted and poured into a square mold. This makes polycrystalline cells much more affordable since there is hardly any wastage compared to the monocrystalline panels and gives them the char uh, that characteristic square shape. They are less efficient at converting energy and have a lower heat tolerance. So in really hot applications or really hot climates, that, that needs to be considered. 
Then we have passivated emitter and rear cell panels, or PERC panels. These solar panels are an improvement of the traditional monocrystalline cell. This newer technology adds a passivation layer in the rear surface of the cell that enhances efficiency. It reflects light back into the cell, increasing the amount of solar radiation that gets absorbed. It also allows greater wavelengths of light to be reflected. And then have uh, thin film panels characterized by very fine layers that are thin enough to be flexible. Each panel does not require a frame backing, making them lighter and easier to install. Unlike crystalline silicon panels that come in standard, uh, standardized sizes of 60, 72, and 96 cell counts, thin film panels can come in different sizes to suit specific needs. However, they are less efficient than typical silicon uh, solar panels. Uh, the thin film panels come in different materials, as you see here. And we're not going to go into each type of material in this video. That would take too long. <laughs> Types of inverters. So we have string inverters. These are the cheapest. However, if a shallow, excuse me, if a shadow falls over one panel, the whole system might not produce power. <gasps> we then have micro inverters. These are the priciest option, but the advantage is each panel has one inverter attached to the back of it, allowing for maximum output. And if one or multiple panels are in shadow, the panels that are still in sunlight will still produce electricity for you. Woo! Uh, there's power optimizers. These maximize output from each panel, but then send it to one string inverter. Also works well with batteries. Lastly, we have hybrid inverters up to uh, 3,000, uh, can convert AC to DC and DC to AC, allowing your panels to send power to the grid, but also allowing you to charge your home battery from the grid. Now questions to ask before buying a, a photovoltaic solar system for your home or business. How much solar energy do I need or want to produce? Are you trying to replace all of your electrical usage in your facility or just a portion of it? How much room do I have for the number of PV solar panels and equipment needed? Are you gonna have enough space on your roof? Do you have enough space for the equipment? Does my location get enough sunlight to warrant a PV solar system? Or is it cloudy all the time where you live? Or do you have large trees surrounding your entire house? Do I need to get permission from an HOA if that's applicable to you? What will the system cost to install? Is a permit required? Most of the time a permit is required. Are there any rebates? There are free online calculators. This one is uh, from pvwatts.nrel.gov. I typed in my address just to give you a real world example of what it produces so you can see the, the numbers. And you can see this is saying that the system output may range from 6,232 to 6,759 kilowatt hours per year near this location. mounting options. So you can mount solar panels on your roof and there's usually a rack system, unistrut, something similar to that, that will bolt to your roof and then the panels bolt to that racking or railing system. If you don't like that look or it's not allowed in your area to do that, a second option, they can be ground mounted or surface mounted like this and they, the panels basically mount to a frame that is self-supporting. Um, there are other products I've seen online um, 
there's actual roofing tiles that are solar panels basically built into each of your roofing tiles. Um, I haven't done enough research on those to know how efficient or affordable they are. Uh, a couple more points I want to make about solar panels to think about from an insurance or maintenance standpoint. Um, if you live someplace that you get a lot of snow, a lot of hail, that's something to talk about with your solar panel company before you buy a solar panel system. Ask them what sort of maintenance they provide, what sort of warranty coverage, if they do get damaged by hail, etc. Or a hurricane. And lastly, they do make do-it-yourself uh, PV solar kits. Here's an example. And just a quick disclaimer, this video is not a paid promotion for any make, model, brand, product, or vendor mentioned here in this video. Um, this happens to be from Inverter Supply. You can see uh, this one, this kit, is uh, rated for 8,000 watts. It's a pure sine, sine wave. Uh, it comes with an inverter, charge controller, etc. Wow. I hope this information helps. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching.